What is going on, Ada Nation? Welcome to DAP Central. My name is Farid, and as a part of today's video, we're going to be breaking down all of the latest news and updates going on in Cardano. The very first topic I want to jump into is going to be updates surrounding the Cardano network itself. We'll be touching on the Sancho Net as well as Mithril and some updates coming down the pipes for stake pool operators or SPOs. Second, I want to jump into some pretty big news surrounding the book token and the fact that their token is going to be going out to the community on October 20th with a ton of additional updates with a sneak peek or a surprise for you guys at the very end. Now, following that, we've got three different tokens which are now being proposed to be added to the LQ or the liquid market, which is going to be a DeFi play on Cardano. And I want to touch on the current status or progress of those particular proposals. Now, fourth, I want to jump into some updates surrounding World Mobile, which has just released their data for Pakistan. But on the heels of that, we've now got some additional air nodes that have also been deployed. Now, last but not least, I want to jump into some performance updates that have been made for the Wing Riders protocol with respect to speed of different uh, platforms or aspects of their website loading at a much faster pace. As always, if it's your guys' first time stopping by the channel, my goal is to provide you and the Cardano community with the latest news updates and tutorials surrounding the top contributors on the network. I'm also a single stake pool operator operating the official DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. If you'd like to support me on my mission to educate the broader Cardano and crypto community, then consider delegating and supporting the stake pool. Jumping into the very first topic, for today's video, I want to highlight some updates when it comes to the Sancho Net as well as just the blockchain in general. If you guys are not aware, the Sancho Net is going to be a brand new playground in anticipation of SIP number 1694, which is aiming to fix governance on Cardano. And with respect to that, we now have version or node version 8.5.0 pre deployed on the Sancho Net. We're expecting a node release on the mainnet in the near future. And then moving down a little bit, we've got a pretty cool update surrounding some of the requirements in order to run a Cardano node or a Cardano stake pool. So this is going to be in reference to what they call UTXO HD, which is labeled as a feature to allow reduced memory usage by allowing UTXO data to be stored on disk instead of in memory. If you're not familiar with the difference, the disk space is usually a little bit cheaper to purchase. And it's also um, the bigger amount when you're looking at data on a particular computer or a laptop, whereas your memory is going to be what's referred to as your RAM. That is a little bit more costly, and we tend to not have as much RAM available as compared to disk space. Now, the goal of this particular feature is to reduce RAM usage of the node and to bring that below eight gigabytes. If I'm not mistaken right now, I believe it's currently sitting at about a 16 gigabyte requirement. And so cutting that down in half and storing some of the um, necessary UTXO information on a disk instead of in memory could potentially be a huge update coming into the network. Again, this one is going to be more or less beneficial to SPOs or stake pool operators that are running Cardano infrastructure. Now, scrolling down, we've got some additional updates surrounding what they call Intersect, which is going to be an MBO or member based organization. As SIP number 1694 rolls out, we're going to be seeing the power as well as just governance coming into the hands of the Cardano community. And if you want to have a say so as to what goes on in Cardano, then make sure to go ahead and join that particular MBO. I'll leave the link to it down below. Now, when it comes to that, it states that there are now currently over 630 members which have now signed up to be a part of Intersect, and that is growing at a weekly rate. I first heard about it at the Rare Evo event, which took place in Denver, Colorado, in which we had the actual Intersect team represented by Amar and Nikhil from Emergo in attendance. Now, they will also be having a booth available at the Cardano Summit taking place between November 2nd and November 4th in Dubai. On top of that, we can expect various grants to be rolling out, which will be related to governance, and the first ones should be coming out very, very soon. Scrolling down, we've got some pretty major updates when it comes to the parameters 
for stake pools or SPOs on the Cardano network. So it reads here, the min pool cost will now be lowered to 170 ADA. It currently sits at 340 ADA. And I believe it's been like this for at least the last two to three years. Now, we had a on-chain vote which took place by SPOs about four or five months ago. It was actually one of the first votes online or to be available. And as a part of that vote, we saw the majority of the community vote to, I believe, cut the, excuse me, cut the min pool cost in half while raising the K parameter to 1,000. So we're going to see the min pool cost being cut in half, which is basically the rewards that go out to the SPO or stake pool delegator or excuse me, stake pool operator when the first block is minted on the network. And so this, I think, will be a pretty big update. But nonetheless, it's going to be coming out on October 27th at 945 UTC. So we've got about one and a half more epochs until this particular update kicks in. And once it does, we can expect for that min pool cost to be dramatically reduced. Now, SPOs have one of two choices. Obviously, number one is to just go ahead and reduce their min pool cost. But if their min pool cost is going to actually running or going towards running or maintaining their infrastructure, they may choose to either raise it or keep it at 340. So make sure to keep an eye out on different stake pools and what they'll be doing surrounding that in the near future. Now, last but not least, we've got some updates surrounding Mithril. So Mithril has now gotten a new zip compression, which cuts the snapshot size in half, which again is going to be a huge saving in terms of memory. We've also got the bootstrap time cut down to a little bit over 15 minutes. And then there's going to be more integration work being done to put Mithril or integrate it into different light wallets. So that's going to wrap it up for the first set of updates surrounding the Cardano network. Some pretty big changes. I believe the biggest ones are going to be surrounding the parameter or the parameter committee updates, as well as the ones surrounding Voltaire and SIP number 1694. Moving into the next set of updates, I want to talk to you guys about the book token. Now, the book token has already sold, and I believe that the sale concluded a couple of days ago, but we're now going to see the first initial distribution of the token taking place on the Cardano network. So as a part of that, the token delivery will be taking place on October 20th at 12 o'clock or noon UTC. That's when you can expect to begin to see transactions or the book token being delivered into people's wallets that participated in their ITO or initial token offering. Following that, we also got some pretty big news surrounding the first ever book sale that's going to be taking place for the platform, which is only available using the book token. So what we have here is going to be their Monster Series 2.0, which is only going to be a total of 666 books available, again, with the purchases having to be made in the actual book token. So this is a piece of utility when it comes to the actual token now being distributed and going out into the community. Now, for those of you who are not aware, some of the unallocated tokens have now gotten an allocation. So after the ITO, there were a certain number of tokens that were not sold out. And what we saw in Josh's update was him breaking down exactly what all of those tokens would be going towards. So the first network we're going to be expecting is going to be a book slash ADA liquidity pool heading over on the min swap protocol. So this is going to offer a way for liquidity providers to potentially earn some tokens if they're able to get a triple yield farm done or approved by the min swap protocol. But this is also going to allow for simple trading, whether you're looking to get into the token or get out of it, again, utilizing the MinSwap protocol. Now we can expect a total of 200 million of the book tokens going into the liquidity pool. Number two, we can now expect for OG book rewards to go out to all 10,000 owners or all 10,000 NFTs when it comes to their Gutenberg Bible. That was their first ever book mint or NFT mint. And so they're going to be looking to reward users in um, the form of 200 million tokens going out to the collective of all 10,000 NFTs. Now, this is going to be broken down in a total of 24 months. So you will not be receiving all of your book tokens right away or at least right after the initial distribution. I believe that they're going to be giving out those rewards starting in November. 
And then that'll be lasting a total of 24 months with tokens going out every two months. Now, following that, we've got some additional tokens going towards a brand new feature or a brand new ADA stake pool. So the book team is going to start running their own stake pool. And we can expect that 200 million of the book tokens will be going towards the stake pool. Now, they've also got some pretty cool plans for the ADA rewards, which I believe will also be going back over into the community. Now, they've also got a pretty cool update surrounding their golden bookmarks, which were basically a random drop to different participants within their NFT community. And so there's a total of 10 golden bookmarks, and we're going to see each owner of a golden bookmark receiving a whopping 1 million of the book tokens as a part of being a holder of those 10 book bookmarks. Now, we've also got an additional 22 million tokens going towards their marketing team. And keep in mind that the team will not be getting any tokens from the unallocated portion of their ITO. So that means that moving forward after the initial distribution, they will not be able to sell any assets, nor will they be receiving anything from that allocation again, which was left over from their ITO. Now, at the very end of the actual video, we did get a pretty cool update here from Josh Stone himself. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly play this update here. But this is going to be a pretty big announcement surrounding what they're going to be calling book.iocon or book.io conference. Now, this is going to be released or taking place on April 20th of 2024. So without any further ado, let me go ahead and play this clip. Oh, and one more thing, mark your calendars for April 20th next year in 2024 for the first ever book.iocon. More details to come soon. Thanks. So as you guys heard there, the first ever book.iocon coming in 2024. We don't know the location and we don't know exactly what to expect, but if we were to take a guess, I'm sure that we're going to see a tons of different publishers, tons of different authors, and tons of different community members from the book.io platform. All right, that's going to wrap it up there for updates surrounding book.io. As always, if you guys do enjoy these updates while I'm on the go, I would appreciate you if you could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding the book.io team, some of the Cardano parameter updates or anything else that we're going to be breaking down as a part of today's video, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. Jumping into the next updates, this is going to be a pretty brief one, but we've got some updates surrounding the Liquid protocol. Now, Liquid's going to be a DeFi platform, one of the first that actually launched on Cardano with support for ADA, JED, and a few other assets. And we're now seeing some proposals to add the MIN token or the governance token for MinSwap, as well as the WMT token, the governance token for World Mobile, as well as AGIX or the governance token for the new net protocol. Jumping over into their official governance portal, we can see that right now all three assets do have a voting rate to approve them all at 100. So pretty unanimous decision so far when it comes to adding these assets. And I don't see this being overturned in the short term. So get ready for additional assets. Again, MIN, WMT, and AGIX all being added into the Liquid platform. Moving over into the next set of updates, I want to jump into some news surrounding the World Mobile Project. Now, World Mobile just released their data within the region of Pakistan, where we now have over 360 different air nodes deployed in that particular area. We now also have, I believe, over 400 plus air nodes deployed in Zanzibar. Now, to that end, we now have released or we've now seen the deployment of 11 additional air nodes, bringing the total across Pakistan and Zanzibar all the way to 821. Now, the very last topic I want to jump into is going to be some performance updates when it comes to the Wing Riders protocol and their AMM style decks. So it states here, experience two to three times faster batching speeds. And exactly what does this mean? Well, utilizing the platform with their new updates when it comes to performance, you'll be able to execute swaps on the decks, gaining two to three hundred times faster speeds. Previously, swaps took anywhere between 80 to 100 seconds, and they're not going to be taking anywhere between 20 to 40 seconds. So more than a 50% reduction in the speed and times it takes for orders to be executed and batched on the Wing Riders protocol, which is obviously a pretty huge update when it comes to the front end user experience for anybody utilizing their platform. Now, last but not least, they've also made some updates here to their pool and farming pages for APRs in how they load. 
So it states here that's going to be a 99% um, increase or faster loading times on fetching token metadata and images, again, with a 3x boost in speed for their batchers. If you guys have not already utilized the Wing Riders platform, the official link to it is down below there, which is available at app.wingriders.com. Now to close this out, the Wing Riders team did recently launch their WRLP, where we saw the official launch of the OrcFax token, the Plutus.R token, as well as the Sara token. That was their very last one, and Sara is aiming to be a lending and borrowing protocol. Now, one of the stipulations when utilizing the WRLP is that they have a minimum amount raised or a minimum requirement to be raised. And we saw that the OrcFax team actually met their minimum amount to be raised. The Plutus.Art token did not. So we did not actually see the launch pad distribution take place. And unfortunately, we also saw that the Sara team did not raise or meet their minimum requirement in order to have a successful launch through the WRLP. So we're going to see exactly what other measures or routes the team takes to distribute their token. But I did break this down in the fact that they had just released an update surrounding their testnet a couple of videos back. So that will bring me here to the end for today's video. Again, breaking down some pretty cool updates surrounding the network, some parameter updates for SPOs, as well as some performance improvements there. We also had a pretty big segment surrounding Book.io and their upcoming token distribution, as well as LQ and some new assets, as well as World Mobile and Wing Riders. As always, if you guys found any portion of today's video to be helpful, or if you learned anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could tap that like button. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you appreciate updates like these on the go, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions for me surrounding Cardano or any of the other projects that we talked about as a part of today's video, then make sure to go ahead and leave a comment down below. That said, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video.